And we are moving to so this thing with the laminates. Now there was the talk on the laminates. Now we are coming to texture layer ceramics. The talk will be given by Professor Raul Bermejo from University of uh, Leuven. And he's going to talk about the understanding fracture in textures layer ceramics from macro to micro scale. Raul, I, think, I think you need to close the presentation, Mr. Liu. And you give me the rights to share my presentation, Peter. Yeah, no, as soon as he closes, then it, you will be able to share. I, I think I've already closed. Yes. Excellent. Oh, okay. Perfect. Wow. Okay, sorry. Thank you very you. much. Can you hear me well? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Peter, for the introduction. Thanks for the organizers, especially to, to change my presentation from Tuesday to, to Monday. I appreciate that. So today I'm gonna surely give you an overview of what we have uh, been investigated over the years on understanding the fracture in layer ceramics and some new insights on characterization of the micro scale, trying to see if we can explain some of the observations at the micro scale. Um, as you know, most of you either working with the structural or functional ceramics we, we suffer the main problem of brittleness on the ceramic parts. In many cases, we have uh, catastrophic failure. And as soon as we get a crack, for example, in a functional system, we train the functionality and, and the material will not work properly. So there is a need to seek for tough and, and mechanical reliable ceramics. And in this regard, there's a lot of research done in the last couple of years trying to see what we can learn from the nature, from the nature in terms of how the combination of different materials at different length scales in a hierarchical architecture can give better properties in terms of, of mechanical resistance and damage tolerance. And there has been some success in this regard. So I would like to address several questions today. Um, one of them is what can we learn from nature if we observe how fracture occurs in these inorganic systems? The second natural question is what can we apply to design engineer systems? And if we understand how to design the systems, can we improve these engineering parts and how? And the last part of my talk, I will dedicate to show a little bit on how by characterizing and understanding the micro scale toughening effects, then we can, uh, so to say, explain the microscopic behavior, and in some cases, trying to design reliable ceramic systems. So I think many of you are familiar with this type of picture where you saw the hierarchical architecture of, in this case, calcium carbonate platelets joined together by a nanopolymer layer. And here, for me, what is important is to realize there are two main aspects. One is the architecture in terms of how the layers are put in terms in top of each other. And the other hand is interesting to look at the microstructure. So we have these elongated platelets joined together, separated uh, by a nanopolymer uh, matrix. So if we think on how to apply this to engineering designs, and we saw some of the aspects in the previous talk, we can say, okay, let's try to make uh, multi-layer systems combining ceramic layers with different properties. We can have uh, different ceramics with different microstructures. Um, the second interesting idea is to, to tailor the distribution of layers within the same, within the same component. And with these, uh, you should be able to also tailor the, the fracture as I will show you later on. And the last but not least um, concept is why don't we, we try to also uh, tailor the microstructure of the individual layers in an attempt to mimic the, the microstructure found in nature. So um, going very directly to some experimental observations that we have done in the past, we could see how using the first approach if you combine uh, layer ceramic, ceramics with different thermoelastic properties, you can induce compressive residual stresses in the internal layers, which aim to arrest the propagation 
of surface cracks, as you can see here in this thermal shock uh, multilayer alumina based ceramics. And I have here a um, small video to illustrate how this strategy can also be effective under bending uh, loading situations. You can see here a notch, and when it is uh, a strain, you will have a crack at the, at, the, at the notch, and then the crack will propagate through the first layer in a brittle manner. But due to the effect of compressive layers, you can arrest the propagation of that crack. It's what we call, what we call damage tolerant systems or architectures. And without going too much into understanding how the fracture proceeds, uh, if you see here in this plot, we represent the loading and also the, the apparent fracture resistance of the material as a function of the, of the crack length. So the length that the crack will penetrate into the layer. When we have a monolithic ceramic, we are used to having a constant without our curve effects, a constant fracture toughness independent on the crack length. But when you have a multi-layer system based on residual stress profiles, then you can have regions with a, a lower toughness and regions with higher toughness as the crack proceeds. How can we use these kind of models to explain what we observed in the previous videos? So imagine we have a notch like we had before, and then we do, we do some loading and the bending, so applying the Griffith criterion, we learn that when the stress intensity factor at the crack tip overcomes the fracture toughness of this particular region, then a crack will start propagating. And this is actually what we observe at a certain loading situation. And using the same reasoning in elastic fracture mechanics, we can predict that after entering a certain depth in the compressive layer, this equation will no longer hold. And then we, we should have crack arrest because the stress intensity factor is lower than the fracture resistance at this particular location. So this is a, a way to explain very simple uh, how a crack may propagate in a multi-layer system. And what happens is that you want to keep propagating the crack through the structure. You need to increase the load and you reach fracture toughness values which are maybe three or four times those of the individual layers. The second strategy uh, is when we use these compressive embedded layers, it's interesting that depending uh, where, where you embed this layer, how far from the surface that you are loading under tension, you can predict one or another fracture behavior based upon the fact that the farther the layer is embedded, the higher energy you will have during crack propagation and at the upper end toughness will be lower in this region than it will be in this other region. So having this kind of system, you could tailor your fracture or in another way, if you like, if you are thinking of having 3D structures, which nowadays could be 3D printed, and you can uh, recognize locations of, of lower mechanical resistance, you could try to think of this kind of uh, concept in order to reinforce a, a certain location by varying the location of the layer that you were embedding. Well, this is the second concept. The third concept uh, I mentioned is trying to tailor the microstructure of the individual layers. One interesting uh, approach is to texture the alumina material. And if you texture during templating grain growth, induced during sintering, you can see that the fracture occurs in not such a brittle manner. You can absorb the energy by propagating along the platelets. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit effective. It really depends on the aspect ratio of the platelets, etc. But you can really get uh, a certain reinforcement by doing that. So in terms of thinking of how to improve engineering designs, Think about the combination of three different concepts, the location of the layers, uh, compressive stresses, and also tailored microstructure. So showing just a very simple example that we did, where we embedded uh, layers with compressive stresses and textured microstructure, we could observe the benefits of, on the one hand, the crack 
the, the compressive stresses arresting the propagation of the crack. And then the weak interface between the, the green boundary of the platelets by guiding the crack uh, along these basal planes. So we have two benefits, increasing the fracture energy of the system. And this, if you like, resembles a little bit, not, not very 100%, but resembles a little bit the fracture that we observe in these snake-like systems. Um, how effective this design could be against other types of loadings, for instance, contact damage. We saw in the Hans Heineken um, uh, contest this morning, uh, the talk from Abdullah, he was showing the investigation on how uh, doing contact damage on Equiax alumina, you can get the very uh, classical head chain cracks going into the microstructure. If you have a texture alumina, you can modify, so to say, the fracture modes and get a quasi-plastic deformation uh, uh, according to shear sliding along these weak planes. And what it was interesting is that if you combine these, these multi-layer system having a texture layer under compression inside, it is very interesting how effective this design could be against contact damage. And the main role here is the shear or passive plastic deformation of the platelets. So the weak interface between the platelets is key to absorb the damage on the surface and, and at the end uh, being damage tolerant for the whole structure. So I hope you all visited this morning. Very nice presentations were given the contest. Um, if you want more details on this, you can access uh, our contribution. Uh, what I would like to draw the attention the last two minutes is that on the one hand, if we measure the fracture toughness at the micro scale, for example, using single edge notch beam, you can get this classical brittle fracture on Equiax alumina. If you have texture alumina, it may not look like so much uh, brittle, but if you look at the values that you get, they're relatively similar. So just by texturing, you can get certain percent, 10 percent, 15 percent improvement. But still, it doesn't need, need, need to be or look to be very effective just texturing alone. So what we wanted to understand at the micro scale is how to quantify how tough could be this platelet or grain boundary between platelets in comparison to the fracture toughness of a single grain. It's, it's very easy to say, very tedious to make. So we had a collaboration of Slovakia Academy of Science with uh, Thomas Chanari that um, we were thinking of, of making some uh, focus ion beam on cantilevers and then test it on the micro scale. So we have out of this texture microstructure, just basically flip out one cantilever and, and doing a, a single edge V notch test, so to say. Question is, of course, if you have a cantilever, whether you are notching at the grain boundaries or inside the grain. So we did both um, investigations and you can see here on the left-hand side, two uh, exemplar samples. One of them is just one single grain notch at uh, a certain depth and then a multi-grain texture alumina, which the notch is placed at the grain boundary. You can see here the, the, the front view of this. And we observed there was about 40% difference in toughnesses. I will not tell you which one was tougher. If you want to know the answer, please visit uh, the talk from Joseph on, on Tuesday. He will give you more insights on these. Um, so to summarize, the state of the art, so to say, on, on layer ceramics, based on tape casting technologies, we found out several ways to tailor the fracture, making more damage tolerance. And nowadays going into 3D printing, what we are trying to do is apply this knowledge on, on 3D printing architecture, where we can not only combine different materials using 3D printing, but also tailor the microstructure after 3D printing the part inducing templated grain growth during the system. And uh, with these strategies, we're trying to replicate what we have learned here with conventional intent casting and see the possibilities that we could have with 3D printing.
more information you found out in these open access papers. So we're collaborating with the company leaders. We're aiming also going into multi-material systems. As you can imagine, the, the field is open for, for, for different ideas. And uh, when we think of the complexity of these devices, we should take a look to the nature where we really find very complex systems uh, centered on low temperatures, making fantastic texture architecture in a different geometries and architectures. So um, I think this is very inspiring. I think this is a way, a way to go, uh, but we have, I think we can apply very much what we have learned in the past to the 3D printing and not just start from scratch. The complexity is some add-on feature that we can use, but we still have to fight with sintering. We need to fight with the brittle fracture. We need to, uh, so to say, uh, challenging will be how to test these materials uh, mechanically. This is something that we are, we are working on. So with this, I would like to uh, thank you for your attention. More a summary of this can be found in a paper of the Union of the European Ceramic Society. I thank the ERC for funding and my young group, uh, which is always very supportive. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raul, very much for your interesting talk. Uh, now the session is open for the discussion. If, please, if any of you have some questions for the speaker, just raise your hand, please. Raul, maybe I'll take this uh, opportunity to, in the meantime, while the others will be uh, considering their questions. I would like, I was wondering, you, you showed us very interesting that you combine these three approaches into one single material. And my, like, if you could somehow comment, how do you design this material? I mean, how, because I, I can imagine that it matters a lot if you put like a layer ceramics on the as an outer layer of your material. How do you you know how do you decide what what do you follow when you are designing? Right. So in this particular, can you see my slide again? Yes. Yes. So if you look at these designs, typically conventional tape casting. Um, for this design, we use like multi multi core casting technique when you have four different slurries or five different slurries on one tape. And then we just, uh, you know, uh, stuck together at different degrees. So you can build up this continuous structure with different connectivity. And, and regarding texture, it's a question of sintering, as you will know. So we, we make sure that we add the proper uh, seeds and materials inside these layers. So we will get a texture during sintering. Um, with 3D printing, uh, it's not going to be easier, so to say. It, it's not yet there uh, in order to make this type of complex architecture using 3D printing, using multi-materials, as far as I know. Yeah. It's, it's going to be there, but uh, still something to, to get this level of connectivity and accuracy is nothing that easy. But it's currently possible, so to say, to try. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is there any other question? Everybody's going to the gala dinner, so. <laughs> yeah. See. But uh, Raul, I, I, I'd like to have one more, if, 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 it's, sure, okay, sure. if it's okay. Uh, it's not uh, I was, uh, I like the, 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 the result you showed us on these micro cantilevers, but if I understood well, so you did it for this textured, textured grains and you, is that correct? It was for the textured ceramics. Right. And, and you introduced notches once in at the grain boundaries, one inside the grain. Right, that's, that's correct, yeah. So so that was done at uh, Kosice uh, from Tama. So it's not it's not very easy to do. You have yeah. to, to expose the, the I mean, to, to really, if you look at this picture here, this is a grain boundary. This is a grain boundary. So you really have to be very 